We're once again talking uh, Olympic Games in Tokyo, Japan, and I'm delighted to uh, welcome Daniel McGee to the airwaves of, of Highland Radio and also to HighlandRadio.com. Good to see you, Daniel. Good to see you as well. Thank you. Listen, Daniel, exciting time ahead. You're about to board a plane on Friday to, to head away to, to Japan. Uh, we've been waiting a year for this event to come around. There's been a long delay and stuff, but you're almost there. You're nearly there. Yeah, almost there. It's been a, a long wait and a crazy year with uh, everything going on with the pandemic and the, the COVID situations that we've had to deal with. But thankfully now we're, we're coming cr close to the finishing line and, and we'll be setting off soon on Friday. Yeah, uh, I'm just going to touch uh, obviously on the on the Donegal interest that, that pre Olympics was Chloe and, and Sam and we were all rooting for them and that we we're hoping that, that your family members your siblings will be able to to get over the line and make it but it it didn't work out for them which was unfortunate and uh, listen they had an absolutely brilliant year badminton wise but with things being so tight that just when it came to the crunch at the very end they couldn't get over the line. Yeah, you know, the guys got themselves in a fantastic position and, and got really close towards the end. Um, you know, really good results at All England, European Games this year. Uh, unfortunately, the final three qualification events, uh, which Sam had talked to you about, you know, trying to reach the quarterfinals of those, they were cancelled uh, due to COVID. So with the last three qualification events uh, being cancelled, they just missed out on, on the final hurdle. Huge disappointment for them, but uh, Chloe, of course, was looking to get into what would have been a, a fourth games. Is there a possibility that next time around in Paris, given that it's not four years, it's three years, that maybe the Geo could team up again, or is it something that they're they're in discussions with at the moment? Yeah, I think I think Chloe, having done three cycles and you know has played as long as what she's had, I don't think another games is is in the back of her mind at the minute. Uh, with Sam, he, he is still young enough and his level is still right there, um, you know, and he, he's one of our most experienced and most decorated players. So if he went for it and decides that he wants to push on, there's an opportunity there and he'll have to team up with someone new. But if he feels that now is the right time to stop, he, he's done everything in his career that he can be very proud to, to leave it there. But he has a few decisions to make now uh, if he wants to make one more push at it. Yeah, well, hopefully so. We'll see what happens down, down the line with, with Sam and, and, and indeed Chloe. But uh, you've got one athlete who's heading out there, uh, Nat Newen, and he qualified um, a number of weeks ago for it. It's going to be a big occasion for him. First time there, 21 years of age, Daniel. Yeah, really impressive uh, qualification period for Nat. He finished 26 out of 42 in a qualification race. So well inside the qualification mark and a massive achievement for him at only 21 years of age. Uh, to qualify for his first Olympics as one of the youngest players that will compete in it, but not only that, but to be so far inside the qualification mark. Yeah. Uh, what are you expecting of him, or what is he expecting from from the competition? What's what's his, his realistic target now as, as he heads for the plane? Well, if you ask Nat, he'll, he'll say he's there to win it, but um, <laughs> you've got to be realistic with your expectations as well. And we, we've set a goal for him to reach last 16 in his yeah. first Olympics. Um, and that's a high end goal because he'll be placed in a group with a seeded player who will be one of the top 16 players ranked in the world and then potentially one other player that will be around the same ranking as himself. Uh, so for him to achieve last 16, he'll, he'll have to create an upset. But we've seen him do that earlier in the year when he reached last 16 All-Englands, beating Sri Kant Kadambi, who's number 13 in the world. So he is capable of an upset, but he will need to do that to reach last 16. Yeah, interesting to note this week as well. A lot of talk around the Olympics, and you know, Patsy McGonigal, Patsy had said it, it takes ten years to make a champion. So, uh, not given his, his his young age, he's got a lot of time there to to come around and, and get what he wants to do and win something. So, so he does, Daniel. Absolutely, like uh, the next Olympics, Nat will be in an even better physical, mental uh, preparation for that. Uh, he'll be a lot stronger and he'll be a lot more experienced. Um, he can go into this Olympics very free uh, as an underdog and as someone who's done really well to, to reach the mark on this occasion. So we have you know long-term goals for him for 2024, 2028, um, but this one will be really, really important for him to have that experience of what an Olympics Games is like and still go there with the ambition to create some upsets.
Yeah. Uh, Davis Ifram, who's his coach, is also going out. So three years guys representing uh, Badminton Ireland. But from your own perspective as as the high performance director of, of Badminton Ireland, you've got you've got a huge role there. What is it you want to take out of this this Olympics for the sport, Daniel? Yeah, I think every Olympics it's important to have a representation there for your sport uh, and to try and create some moments that's going to inspire people to play your sport. Uh, and we've had that, you know, very much with Chloe being the first ever Irish athlete to win matches at the Olympics, where she won a, a game in Beijing and she went on and win again in London. And then we had that famous moment of Scott Evans in Rio, where he uh, took off the shirt and it started to train the full Evans. So these moments, you know, attract people to the sport. And when you're maybe a lower profile sport like Bampton, you know, you have to take advantage of these big stages to, to promote the game. And thankfully, through Chloe, through Scott and even Sonia McGinn back in Sydney, we've been able to you know boost the profile of our sport and, and bring members in that way and, and increase the profile. So um, it's really important that way. What are you looking forward to most about Japan this summer? Um, I, I want to just go there and, you know, absorb the culture and absorb the Olympic Games experience. But also, you know, we're very much focused on our role uh, within the sport that we want to go out there and achieve results that we haven't achieved before. Um, last Olympics, we reached last 16. If we, if we can do that again or even push a little bit further, that, that would be a big, big statement for our sport. So, that's the goal, is to keep progressing forward. Um, if it doesn't come, then we have to make sure that come the next cycle that we're even more prepared and even more ready to get these big level results. Yeah, I don't want to be too negative on this, but it is the, the hot topic around Japan and the Olympics. Are you worried about the COVID situation over there, Daniel? Um, I don't think so, uh, because the amount of work and effort and protocol that's involved. I know even within our own team structure, it's not going to be like London. London was like a, a party festival type Olympics, everybody mixing, everybody enjoying the experience. This time it's everybody keeping within their own bubble, uh, following protocol, regular daily testing, not mixing with the Japanese public, using their own private transport and staying within the Olympic Village bubble itself. So it should be a safe games in that terms. Uh, for both the Japanese public and for the Olympic athletes and uh, personnel that are taking part. Um, and hopefully that we'll see, you know, the boost that sport gives when you get to see it on TV and, you know, get people getting behind their home nation. Hopefully that will give Japan a pick up and they'll, they'll buy into the games a little bit more. Yeah. Just finally then, um, you're always a proud Donegal man when you be globe trekking around the world and, and and it's going to be a very very similar case for you now when you when you hit tokyo so it is daniel yeah absolutely you, you know you can take the man out of the goal but you can't take the goal out of the man you know <laughs> it's uh we're we're notorious wherever we go uh for being uh, a bit of fun and you know a bit of optimism and uh you know i hope to bring that Donegal spirit along with uh, you know mark english and the, and the rest of the Donegal contingent that's going to be there so fingers crossed we can achieve some good results and uh, put Donegal on the map again. Yeah, hopefully so. Listen, Daniel, the very best of luck to you and indeed your badminton Ireland team uh, with a successful Olympic Games in Tokyo. Delighted to get speaking to you. Thanks, Oshin. Appreciate that.